In this video, we're going to be tying the mouse rat. It is a deer hair mouse pattern. It can be used for either trout or bass. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a tail. Uh, the original mouse rat did use a uh, leather chamois. Uh, I don't like to use leather chamois because it doesn't float. It actually absorbs water. Uh, so what I like to use is just some foam. All we're really looking for is the silhouette of a mouse tail on the surface of the water when we're fishing our fly. Uh, a lot of people also will use chenille, like some worm chenille, but again that does soak water and it does sink. So I cut a tail. It's about one and a half times the length of the straight portion of the shank of the hook. I'm just going to take this foam, I'm going to tie it right in, making sure that it sits on the shank nice and even. I don't like it to be lopsided or anything. Get it as even as you can, just like so. And that'll basically be our, our tail. Now the next thing we're going to do to start the fly is we're going to tie in the underbody. That'll be our first clump of deer hair. So every clump of deer hair that I'm going to use is going to be a fairly generous clump. I would say about the diameter of a pencil and a half or so. About as much as you can hold in your finger. And for the first clump, like I said, we're going to do the underbody. So I'm actually going to take the deer hair and I'm just going to trim off the tips. Just exposing the blunt fibers. And then I'm going to take this clump of deer hair and I'm going to place it directly underneath the hook. I'm going to do two loose wraps. I'm going to take that deer hair and pull down and flare it. So you can see here I just have the deer hair on the underside of the hook. Now I'm going to take that deer hair and I'm going to stroke it down and back. So I'm going to use kind of a downward stroke there and back. And then I'm going to pull my thread just work it towards the front. Then I'm going to do some nice tight wraps right in front of that. And I can kind of twist the deer hair into place, making sure that it's nice and secure. Then I'm going to take my thread just in front of that clump of deer hair, and we're going to do that same thing once again. Just take a clump, another generous clump. And there's no need to stack the deer hair at this point. We're just using kind of the butt fibers to build a body. So no need to stack them. Now I just can take all that hair, I'm just going to basically pack it together by using both fingers and squeezing them together. There I have a nice dense deer hair underbody. Now we're ready to tie in the top portion of the fly. For that I'm going to use some deer hair, but I'm actually going to use the, the tips instead of the butt ends like we just did. And again, we're going to use a generous clump. And this time, I do want to stack it. I do want to drop it into my stacker. And I just give it basically a rough stack. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It just has to be kind of rough, a rough stack. Then I'm going to take my finger. I want my wing, or the back on this fly, to extend about three quarters to an inch off of the shank of the hook. So I want it to be about that long. So I just take my finger and I just pinch that length from the tips down to the butts. So my finger and thumb here are about three quarters to an inch or so. Then I'm going to trim those butt ends. 
so that they're nice and even. I'm going to lay them right on top of the shank of the hook and I'm going to do a nice loose wrap just to capture it and I can bite down on it. Now I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to wrap to the bare hook shank, then I'll wrap back up onto it once more, and I'll wrap down to the bare hook shank, and that should secure it. And if it twisted a little bit on you, you can just take the material and just twist it back into place. So that is basically how we're going to build the body for this fly. Now we're going to do that, usually it takes about three separate times. We're going to do that all the way up until we get about two-thirds the way up the shank, just a little bit more than half, and then we're actually going to stop. So uh, you're just going to repeat the processes that we just did until you get to that portion on the shank. Now, once we have the complete underbody formed, and also the wing, it took me about three sections of tying to finish off the fly. Now you can see I've left quite a bit of room up there by the eye. That's exactly what we want. Leave some room for the head. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in some ears, some little Mickey Mouse ears. And uh, traditionally this was tied out of chamois or leather as well. But again, that absorbs water and makes the fly heavy, so I like to use foam. So I just cut out like a little V-shape with some little ears. And this is going to basically mark the point at which we are going to start the head. Basically where the head starts and the body ends. We're just going to tie these in with a little bit of kind of some V action with some thread. Just kind of make a V or cross wrap through those eye through those uh, ears I should say. Try not to trap any deer hair if you can avoid it. There we go. So I've got my ears tied in. Now the next thing to do is to form the head and the head for this fly is done a little bit differently than the body. We actually do spin deer hair for this head. So I'm going to take another generous clump of deer hair and I am going to trim off the tips just exposing the butt ends of the fibers. I'm going to take my thread and just wrap it right in front of those ears. I'm going to take my deer hair and I'm just going to pinch it into place right on top of the shake of the hook. I'm going to do two loose wraps. I'm going to pull and let go. And basically what that is going to do is let the deer hair spin around the shank of the hook completely all the way around. Then I'm basically going to take this deer hair and I'm going to work it back and pull the thread to just in front of it. So just use my fingers to kind of pull it all back and coax it out of the way and then I'll do some tight turns right in front of it. Then I'm going to compress that deer hair and I'm going to do so by pinching the butt end of all these deer hair fibers here at the back and by pushing back just like so. What that's going to do is just compress the deer hair and all that thread. And you can see there I gained about a sixteenth of an inch probably or so on the shank. That's exactly what we want. We want it to all just be smushed back. Now we're going to do the same thing. Take that deer hair and trim off the tips. I'm going to lay it right on top of the shank. Two loose wraps, then I'll let go and just let the deer hair spin around the shank. I'll just kind of coax the deer hair back. Pull my thread to just in front of it.
And again, I want to make sure it's nice and compressed. And this will be my last one, so I really want to make sure all that deer hair is pushed back as far as I can get it. A lot of, there are deer hair packers that will help you with this. Some guys I've seen use a pen, a big pen. I usually just use my fingers. Now this last clump, you can see I just have barely any room, so I'm going to do a nice small clump of deer hair, about half the size of what I've been using. You don't want to do the same size of deer hair if you are running out of room. So a little miniature clump there just to finish this fly off. Give me a nice dense head there. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to quickly whip finish. And it's kind of tricky to whip finish with all this deer hair. I basically get the whip finish started and just let the bobbin hang on the, on the hook. I'm going to get in here and just whip finish while I'm holding all that deer hair back and out of the way. If you trap a couple fibers, it's not the end of the world. You can get in there and trim those out. Now the last step is to trim this puppy. So what we're going to do is take a double-edged razor blade. I'm just going to hold it on each edge. I'm going to turn the mouse upside down and I'm just going to do a nice flat cut right on the bottom. I'm going to slightly bend the razor blade just a little bit pull out all the trimmings and then a lot of times what you'll need to do is kind of trim around the bend of the hook there razor blade won't get all the way up under there Let's trim out any of the long fibers Then you can just kind of fine tune the sides. And a lot of how you trim is personal preference. If you'd like a nice wide bodied mouse, you can leave it kind of wide. If you like it a little thinner, a little more tapered, you can trim it like that. It just kind of depends. And if you're fishing for trout or bass, a lot of that kind of depends on the look that you're going for. Now we need to trim the head. For the head, I'm just going to take the razor blade and I'm really going to curve it this time. I'm going to bend it. And I'm just going to trim a little cone-shaped head, kind of angling up. And I want to be careful that when I get close to those ears that I stop. I don't want to trim my ears. I use my scissors to get in there closer to the ears. And I just kind of trim a cone-shaped head, just like that. I like a little bit more of a wedge-shaped head. I like my fly when I'm fishing it. I like it to kind of make a V on the water surface when it's swimming, when I'm stripping it back. And that wedge-shaped head will really help kind of make that V. 
If you've ever actually seen a mouse swim across the surface, that's exactly what it does. Then the last thing to do is to tie in the, the eyes. And a lot of guys will tie in the eyes first and spin the deer hair all around it and then kind of trim around the eyes. I find that uh, a little bit harder to do. So I actually usually do them at the end. And what I do to do the eyes is I take a pair of large mono eyes in black. I just trim off one eye leaving the stem and the eye and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put super glue on it and I'm going to stick it down inside the the deer hair. So I take a little bit of super glue here. I like to use the, the brush on kind. I can just kind of brush it right on to the, the little post. And I'm just going to take it and stick it right down into the deer hair. And then I take another little dab and I'm going to put it right on that eye before I really jam it down in there. Then I just take it and I'm just going to stick it down in there and push all the deer hair around it. Just like that. All that deer hair just kind of stick to it. Then I do the same thing on the other side. And if you want to tie these in, like I said, as you're spinning the deer hair, that's another that's another good way to do it, but I found that to be a little bit harder. And to be honest with you, when you're fishing the fly, I don't think the eyes really matter too much, but a lot of guys would probably argue that with me. And that one went in a little crooked. Pull it out and redo it here. There we go. If you kind of mangle up the head a little bit when you're doing that, you can just kind of trim it back into place. And that is basically a mouse rat, deer hair mouse. And you can find all the materials to tie the mouse rat on our website in the riffle.com there you can find links to all the materials to tie it and uh, that is the mouse rat and the last thing you can do is uh, some guys will add whiskers I usually skip that step it's more for just uh, looks but you can use a little bit of black moose hair and you can tie some whiskers right in the front of the fly. That's all there is to the mouse rat.